Welcome or welcome back to Monroe Live, whichever the case may be. I'm Michael Lane, and today we're going to talk about Tesla, specifically a recent announcement they made that was interesting, very interesting. Tesla, a year ago, announced that they were giving up radar on their vehicles, so using a, their camera-based system called Tesla Vision. Well, last week they said they're giving up the ultrasonic sensors. What we have here is a front fascia from a Model Y, our, Giga, our Texas Gigafactory teardown. And you can see one of the sensors right there. There's a little gasket around the outside, color coordinated. There are four of these sensors on the front of the fascia. And let me, let me tilt that for you, Grace. Here's number four if we were going from left to right. And then on the outboard side, I'm going to step in front of you. On both outboard sides, this one's been removed, would be the fifth and sixth ultrasonic sensor, also abbreviated as USS. These components are sourced from Valio, I believe, and we're going to get into what it means to remove these sensors from the vehicle. First, let me flip this around because there's more interesting talking part on the back side. Okay. So Tesla said they're removing these sensors relying on camera. What that means cost-wise for the vehicle is they can remove not only the six sensors we are looking at, but the six sensors on the opposite end of the vehicle, plus this entire wiring loom in the interior or on the inside of the fascia. This is, what, six connectors, seven connectors going back to a harness, sealed connectors, uh, not inexpensive but you know, not drastically expensive either. Let's take a look at what it would cost to pull these out of the vehicle. As a matter of fact, I've got a, one of the sensors right here to take a look at that too. This is the one I pulled out and you can see it's color coded to the body paint. So Tesla has at least five of these in their inventory. That would be one for each color. So I would assume they cross platform Tesla Y, S, X, three, et cetera. So these sensors, we're gonna just do some ballparking here. These sensors run for about $8 each. So you've got the cost of the sensor at $8. You're taking, uh, eliminating this heat staked bracket right here, which is not only the part, but the installation cost of that, and obviously the wiring. So we're gonna show you a graphic a little bit later that um, lays out the you know, cost estimates directionally. And then, in addition to what we're looking at, there are upstream or downstream, depending on how, um, additional items to remove. For example, what ever harness this connects to, which might be the headlamp and dash or whatever it might be called, would have a couple of wires eliminated in it, a connector eliminated from it. And similarly in the rear of the car, if that's the trunk uh, or the body harness, don't know, and doesn't really matter. But some wiring, some cross-link polyethylene, and the copper and the associated connectors are coming out of the vehicle. So when we start adding these up, $8, a couple tenths, 30, 40 cents here, uh, we're looking at in the ballpark of 100, 150 even dollars per vehicle. When you add up that Tesla's shipping um, at the run rate of a million dollars, excuse me, a million vehicles a year now, that's a hundred million dollars. That's not exactly small change. So good for them for uh, cost savings, or is it? Because we're just looking at the cost savings part right now. Um, what I'd like to take a look at, and this graphic should be available too, is during the transition, Tesla announced they won't have some of their features available. Summon, smart summon, auto park and auto assist. They're rolling it out immediately on the three and the Y coming early next year in the S and the X. All right, flipping over. This chart you'll get a look at, but I alluded to uh, some of the cost savings. Oh, I neglected the integrated circuits. There are body controllers that um, these used to be on a LIN connection, now on D, um, DSI version three, and the CAN circuit. So there may be $5 of integrated circuits that could be removed, it's hard to say. With any change, there's also going to be cost. It's going to cost them uh, to modify the software, the validation. I, I'm going to assume that's going to be rolled up in overhead, but this is ballpark. So moving on to the next flippy. 
Uh, the item on the left is from Tesla. This is from their website or their owner's manual showing the range and of the ultrasonic sensors. So that's what's going to be eliminated. That means the slack's going to be picked up by the cameras. And if you don't laugh at my funny graphics, you can see that the cameras, I, they may overlap more than this. They may be, you know, range out farther than this. Uh, there are three front cameras. I'm only showing two for simplicity. Uh, but they have forward-looking front, the, the tr three uh, forward-looking side repeaters on each side. The rearward-looking sensors on, the, actually those are the repeaters. The forward-looking would be in the B pillar. And then there's a camera at the rear. What I find interesting about the timing is the second Tesla announcement that I want to mention. Sometime this summer, two or three months ago, Tesla indicated that they were moving from 1.2 megapixel cameras to 5 megapixel cameras in a deal with Samsung valued somewhere between $3.5 billion to $4 billion, not chump change either. So it looks like we've got camera coverage. Here's a concern of mine as far as functionality. This is a, a side view of a Tesla, and I went out and I took a look at some of the Teslas in our parking lot, did some quick calculations. At about one foot height, there is no camera vision three feet in front of the car. So if we have tricycles, parking blocks, Tasmanian devils, anything running, moving through there, Tesla's betting that their cameras can detect this and deal with it. Parking blocks don't move. Ferrets on amphetamines, whatever, I can't imagine what might be a problem, but this is risky. Now, maybe they've thought it through. Their, their Tesla vision is being supplemented by um, their, not only their in-house work on it, but it's being supplemented by probably thousands of hours of data being uploaded OTA over the air updates back to the mothership where Tesla has an opportunity to uh, review data in situations that were risky or uh, edge conditions where maybe there was a high inertial change, what have you. So um, I'm not speaking pro or con on this, but just wanted to point out two items. One is functional and one is cost. And the fact that they're not engaging with the auto summon for Tesla to indicate that some functions aren't available during this rollout but the cameras are being shipped, it's hard to say if that's an economic supply chain focused reason to modify or if it's just uh, their long-term goals. So in any event, uh, we would love for you to consider subscribing and especially if you're going to criticize my graphics, then you have to subscribe. It's a rule of YouTube, it's the law. Thanks for watching.